Yeah. All right, so let's go into room eight and send Tane if you can do all the temperatures and yep. check this no, out for me. Yep, I can do that. Uh, Mick, can you go through and do all the feeding? Yep, um, sure thing. Check the sows as you go and scrape out any feeders for us. Of course. Okay. All right, very good. It's an early start for workers at this piggery an hour north of Adelaide. But when Centaine Kaysler Smith walks into the shed where the sows give birth, she and her colleagues get quite the welcome. So I'm picking on from here. I think the pigs know me by now. Hey, hey, hey. And the response that I get from them when I walk into the shed, especially when I feed them, is, oh, here comes the person that gives us their food. <laughs> Centaine does a range of jobs on the farm. There you go. I think that wasn't too bad, was it? Sometimes she does the feeding and at other times is responsible for taking the sow's temperatures to ensure they don't have a fever that could lead to problems such as mastitis. Centaine didn't grow up on a farm, but she has always had an affinity with animals. There we go. The thing I like to do most with the pigs is um, when I piggy beast with the pig list, I have a little bit of a hug with them and talk to the sows and the pig list and just, you know, let them know what's happening. Because especially when you've got the first time mums, it's just nice to reassure them that I'm not hurting the babies. So. But finding a full time job hasn't been easy for her. Centaine has autism. Hey, girl. She's 30 years old and, despite an animal science degree with honours, a certificate three in laboratory techniques, and a certificate four in library tech, she's been unable to find a full-time job until now. Take care. It was just frustrating applying for jobs and saying, oh, you're getting feedback from the interview, oh, you did well, but, and not having feedback, so. It was pretty, not a very good process to go through. But. It's a common story for autistic people. Mikhail Crossfield also has the condition and has endured a lifetime of knockbacks and disappointments. The hardest thing is that we're not very vocal as such. We can show you how we can do stuff, but unfortunately with the, the normal way of doing um, job applications, it's always one-on-one, -on -one. you show your resume, uh, you're expected to tell your experience rather than showing it. So, uh, tell me more about what you're going to do this afternoon. Uh, vaccinate the sales fleet, so... Yeah. Only about 40% of autistic people have a job, but at Sunporks Piggeries in South Australia and Queensland, 12 members of the staff are on the autism spectrum. The push to employ autistic people came from the company's managing director, Robert Van Barnevelt. Rob's daughter was diagnosed with the condition when she was four. Her diagnosis has since changed, but it led him to develop close ties to the autism community. This is one of the first programs that's involved agriculture, and it's one of the first programs that, it, that has involved uh, harnessing skills that you know, might involve an empathy with animals or animal care as opposed to numbers and, and pure IT when we're talking about people on the spectrum. So from that point of view, it is absolutely a world first and there's been a lot of uh, things we've had to learn through that journey. South Australia. Yep. The interesting thing with Lizzie is she put a mind to it and she's finished high school last year whilst mm -hmm. working for us, Correct. which I think is a real, um, that's a big commitment. She seems pretty happy. She's very happy. Yeah. The recruitment process has had to become a lot more friendly, though, and that's where Kirsty Richards came in. She's the Autism and Agriculture Program leader. It was her job to look at the traditional recruitment techniques, such as resumes and interviews, that some autistic people struggle with and find a way to make it suitable for them. Where we've certainly found autistic people thrive is when they're given an opportunity to show what they can do and nowhere in the traditional recruitment model is that that uh, that ability to actually get out there and show your ability to do a job rather than try and convince someone that you can do the job um, so what we we've done is removed interviews and resumes entirely and what we've done is give our um, candidates an opportunity to apply online using photographs and we had some just Wonderful applications. 
Interviews were replaced by two weeks on-the-job training. Originally, the company wanted to employ autistic workers in a specific role with the sounds, but it soon became apparent there was no one job suited to all the applicants. It's kind of turned the traditional recruitment model from that perspective on its head. You're taking a person and finding the best role for them rather than sitting there with a role and saying, you must fit in this box. And it's not just about matching people to roles. It's also matching people to people. David McLean is the production manager at the Worsley's Piggery in South Australia. It's been his job to look after the five autistic workers at the site. He admits initially the existing staff were apprehensive. It was scary for them at first, and probably we could have done a little bit better by a few more what is autism type aspects of the program. But generally the, the people have taken that on very well and they've learned with myself going, going through the, the program that we've done over the last 18 months. If you look at what they have achieved as a group, it has been exceptional. It, the workplace has totally changed. The morale has changed. Their pride in the business has changed incredibly. And, and I can't get over what they have achieved. And without their commitment, it wouldn't have been a success. Sunpok is Australia's largest family-owned piggery. A Bentley needle. Bentley needle. OK, we'll take it off. And one of the secrets of success for the Autism and Agriculture Project has been the mentor program. There have been a wide range of responses. We've had um, uh, some of the mentors of just, you know, crusty old pig farmers who you would never expect to take such uh, ownership of, of other staff members in terms of educating them and making sure they're OK, both in work and out of work. Uh, you know, that's, that's been a tremendous transformation. It's funny, they just came together like a jigsaw. You had an individual autistic person who had certain skills and you could just see that they're really well matched to this mentor. For the autistic workers, the project has had flow-on benefits far beyond the workplace. I'm actually part of a drama ensemble. Mick is in an acting group and Centaine has bought a house. It's also changed the life of her mother, Beth Kaisler, who rode the roller coaster ride of highs and lows while Centaine was searching for a job. Unless you've had a child with a disability, you can't explain um, how how it just weighs on you that nobody sees there's any value in her. And when she understands that as well, that is really hard because you see the value in her, but no one else seems to. So, um, you know, the difference in her confidence level is just amazing. And I am just so, I am going to get much. I am so thankful that somebody has given her the chance to show that she is, um, that she can contribute, you know, that she has a lot to offer. Get on top of these cows, flights on, then you get the scrabbling behaviour. Many people with autism have shown an empathy for animals. American consultant to the livestock industry and autism spokesperson Temple Grandin is perhaps the most famous. If they moo when you squeeze them, you're hurting them. A colleague of mine and I uh, actually met with her and we talked about the objectives for the program. Uh, and she was a tremendous help. She, she gave us some very clear guidelines and, and kind of explained that some candidates will be suited to the animal roles and some just won't. Uh, but you need to understand their needs and the environment they need to work in. And if you provide clear directions, clear expectations and constant follow-up, then you're going to have a successful pathway. So that gave us a lot of uh, confidence to go forward. The initial pilot project received $150,000 from the South Australian Government for external collaborators. But for Kirsty and Rob, the benefits to the business's culture far outweigh the costs. I would argue the program hasn't cost anything. I mean, it's been uh, extremely valuable to the business and 
uh, when you have programs like this that have such an impact on the overall culture of the business, the outputs far exceed the inputs. So from Sunpork's perspective, we pay people for a day's work. We pay them the full wage that's not subsidised uh, or anything like that. Our uh, autistic candidates are very much part of the staff and they get treated like everybody else. Our capacity to innovate has increased tremendously because we have people who think differently and they problem solve differently. And so we can take a problem and look at it totally differently to the way we did 12 months ago. And it hasn't cost us anything and it's gained so much for the individuals involved, for our greater workforce and for, you know, for our rural communities in general. Every day we talk about diversity in the workplace. This is true diversity, this is neurodiversity. Uh, we are looking for employees that can think differently. Uh, we don't want to employ the same people all the time. And through that, we get benefits in the workplace. So um, it is anything but charity. In much of Australian agriculture, particularly intensive farming like pig production, finding and retaining staff is a constant struggle. In the 18 months since the Autism and Agriculture Project started, there's been a 70% retention rate of the autistic employees. So how's it going in the new house? Yeah, good thing. Yeah? You got it all set up? Yeah, yeah. Good and to work in the garden, but yeah. it'll happen. <laughs> That's right, plenty of opportunity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the program has changed the lives of the new staff members and the existing ones, and created some lifelong friendships. But since being here, it's been like, it's like a second fan. No. Yeah, a second family. The journey's been very emotional and you get very attached to the, uh, the, the individuals. And they've taught me so much in the last 18 months and hopefully I'll have taught them well. Kirsty now wants to see other businesses embrace autism in their workforce. Our autistic people have not had to change. We've just had to open our minds to the, to the benefits that they bring to our workplace. And they're just so courageous and so brave. And it's such a privilege to be involved in something that gives so much back to people and to families and also to our business and to workplaces. Well, it's made me feel like, yes, I can actually do this despite the fact that They've got us workers, you know, like it's, it's, you know, I can't make them tired to, at the end of the week, but I'm not tired because I've been staying up late and I've been tired because I've come to work and actually achieved something through the week. <laughs>